Your paper begins with an effective literature review. And that means knowing how to find the right papers, how to critically evaluate them, and of course, which papers not to include. Hello everyone, my name is Nathan, I'm founder of The PhD Place, an online postgraduate community dedicated to supporting academics in their research. Today I'm back with another walkthrough of an academic tool. This video is sponsored by Consensus, which is an AI-powered academic search engine built specifically for research. Chris, one of the founders of Consensus, describes it as Google Scholar meets ChatGPT, and I think that's a really great way to think about it. And one of the standout features is that all of the outputs are backed up with citations. So your literature review searches are always grounded in real scientific evidence. Now they have over 200 million academic papers in the database, so it covers a vast range of subjects, making it a really valuable tool for academics. In this video, I'll show you how consensus works and help you decide whether it's a good fit for your academic workflow. I'll walk you through setting up your account, using the tool to develop your research topic, conducting a literature search, and speeding up your review process with their Ask This Paper feature. Now, whether you're outlining your PhD literature review or preparing for a paper, I think it's definitely worth thinking about implementing consensus into your research workflow. But let me show you why. Let's look at getting started with consensus. Now, the first thing you'll notice is how simple the interface is. It's actually surprisingly fast, especially given how deep it can go with its searches. It's really quick to get started. The whole platform has a really slick and polished feel to it. So if you head over to the website, which is consensus.app, you'll see that you can try it out straight away. You can just have a little search, no need to sign up if you don't want to, but if you do, it's super easy. You can sign up using Facebook, Google, your email address, and then once you're in, you can dive straight in to running a literature search. So let's start by searching our research topic. So you might choose to search some keywords to look at the relationship between two keywords or ask a question. It doesn't really matter if your research question isn't particularly well formed because you'll get related questions that inspire your search. So if I search for something that I'm interested in, what are the common challenges faced by PhD students? And it's pretty fast. The AI will generate a short summary for you that maps the literature in the field in response to your question. Of course, you're not gonna copy and paste this literature review because that'd be plagiarism, but what you have got are some foundational ideas that draw on the potential connections between the literature and really the bones of what has already been produced on the given topic. So, for instance, here we've got the subtitles under each of these broader categories, so the important points that are already reflected in the literature. And the important thing is, consensus pinpoints exactly which literature is cited and how it contributes to our understanding of that given question. So if you scroll down, this is where you can see the results of the literature search in more detail. And I really appreciate this snapshot view. So it's really everything that you might look for to make that initial decision about the relevance of a paper and it's provided to you in a really neat list with a succinct amount of detail. Of course, in addition to the title and a brief description, you also get the type of study. So whether it's observational, systematic review, a literature review or something else, and if you don't know what they are, then it also links you to a description, which is pretty neat. You also get the year, the author, and the journal. So, oh, and you also get the number of citations for the paper, which is really important if you're getting a first look at the impact of a paper. But what's also really useful is you get a brief overview of the study's methods. And especially when you're looking at empirical research, you can look at the population, the sample size, the location of the research, the methods, and say you're doing a specific type of literature review, so maybe an empirical literature review, for instance, you can also head up to the top here and apply a filter such as methods, which uses the data to filter out relevant studies just for you. Now, 
You can also filter by year if you want to focus on more recent papers, if that's required by your focus. You've had a look at the paper outline, it looks interesting. For many of these suggested papers, they actually provide access to the full paper, which is pretty cool. And it just means that you have everything you need in one place. And then you can ask the tool some questions. So if we take a look at this one, my cross-border PhD journey, really important paper, it talks about students' poor mental health in academia. Now you can click ask this paper and the tool pops up. And here you can see what would you like to know about this paper? So you might use this to summarize a paper, to ground complex terms using insights from the paper. So let's try summarize the paper in a few sentences. It's pretty quick. You can ask it to make a list of the issues that affect PhD students. And the output is pretty straightforward and quick in generating a response. Once you've decided whether the paper is relevant to your topic and should be included, you can give it a deeper read and draw the conclusions for yourself. Overall consensus is here to help you with your literature search, to improve the depth of your literature review, to support your understanding of the literature that is available to you. And it can also help you recognize gaps in your research and find papers that are new and which might not be included in other research libraries, such as the one provided by your university. Recently, they've added the consensus meter, which is an awesome tool. So if you ask consensus a yes or no question, it will give you a general direction through the consensus meter. Yes, no, or maybe drawing on relevant papers. That's a pretty fun tool to play around with, and it gives you a sense of where the research stands in relation to your question. Now, before I go on to talk about the affordability of consensus, I also want to draw your attention to the limitations of using these types of tools, because they can get things wrong. While you can use them to speed up the process of searching and synthesizing research papers, they're just not a replacement for you and your own thinking processes. So consensus are actually pretty transparent throughout their website in addressing these types of issues that can arise from using these types of tools, which you can check out as you go through their website. Okay, let's have a look at the pricing for these tools. For those who may use the tool less frequently, you can actually try it for free. And it's pretty fair for basic access. You get 10 pro analyses, 10 study snapshots, and access the full library of research papers. But for those who wanna go a little bit deeper and ask more questions, they have a monthly and an annual plan that is reasonably priced if you need to get more done and use it more regularly. That's all I have time for for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this walkthrough of consensus. Please let me know if you've used it for your literature review in the comments below and tell us what you think. Thank you for joining us and as always, good luck on your academic journey.